today we're taking a look at history. History past, history present, and by the look of things, history to come. Because this is Quebec, capital of French Canada, and a city that could easily be taken for an elegant part of France. Quebec stands on Canada's St. Lawrence River, where it widens to such an extent that it's hard to believe we are 500 miles away from the open sea. Ships coming past here are headed for Toronto and inland American ports a thousand miles away on the Great Lakes. The St. Lawrence Seaway, which has made all this possible, is the new chapter of history that Quebec has to report. The ferry boats are an integral part of Quebec life, and from them you can study history past. The heights of Abraham stormed by General Wolfe to capture these famous plains and wrest this province for Britain from the French. But Quebec to this day is as French as ever it was. This is the wood-planked promenade flanking the river where at one time of day or another the inhabitants congregate under the relics of history. But history pervades this quaint place which has somehow evaded the change and rush of transatlantic life. The provincial parliament building is in dignified keeping with the turreted old world charm of the one place on the American continent that has quietly maintained its cultural origins and has of course retained its French flavor to the full. This could so easily be a part of Paris. Quebec street artists might be the painters you find in Montmartre. Talking of possible future history, let it be said that Quebec is not the center of the separatist movement that wants independence for French Canada. Quebec's too easy paced for any such wrangling. Somehow there's peace in Quebec, such as you find in the Laurentian Mountains, the playground north of the river shared by Ottawa, Quebec and Montreal. This is the holiday resort, not two hours drive from all three cities, where not only artists find tranquility. There's a European feel about these mountains. Sometimes it could almost be the black forest. In summer, these mountains with their lakes and woodlands are for boating and hunting, riding and rambling. In winter, they're for skiing and skating and all the snow sports. All the year round, they are East Canada's favorite holiday land. Have you a taste for trout from a mountain stream? Here's where you'll get it. And riding. You need a horse to see the best of the Laurentian mountain trails and they're sturdy mountain horses you find up here. Of course, you can also see horses in Montreal, police Palominos, patrolling the park on Mount Royal, Mont Royal, the high landmark that gave Montreal her name. It's from the top of Mont Royal that you can look down and see exactly how an old European settlement built in French style here on the St. Lawrence River has suddenly been transformed. Modern Montreal, with its skyscraper skyline, is now trying desperately hard to preserve its relics of yore. Mostly, old and new stand together in stark contrast. Yet there still are odd places in the old town that could belong to a French yesterday. This is a backwater scene in Canada's biggest city, where incidentally, the hard center of separation is to be found, bred perhaps by the city's explosive growth and importance. 
which in no way reduce its appeal. Here, too, is the true start of the new St. Lawrence Seaway, policed by Canadian Mounties afloat. The river was navigable up to Montreal before they dammed and dredged the shallows to take the big ships up to the Great Lakes and into the heart of the continent. Now Montreal is the gateway to a score of lake ports, and on their way, the big ships pass Expo, the great exhibition the city set up on two man-made islands in 1967. Expo straddles the St. Lawrence with a glamour and an atmosphere never before encountered. Built as a world fair for one year only, Expo is now a permanent exhibition of man and his world. And what a colourful world it is, by day and equally by night.